What's up, everybody? It's Lady J Bookums. And it's Brand Man Shine. We are back with the Music Mavericks Podcast. What we got today, Lady J? So, today we're going to talk about something that we started to talk about in the last episode, which was, you know, artists being role models or influencers for the community. We started right, right. to talk about Juice World, but we couldn't really get into it. So, we're definitely going to tackle that. For today, we also going to talk about a few things that independent artists should start doing to get themselves prepared, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to be professional, to kind of scale up and step their game up, all right? So, let's go sure. ahead and jump right into this. You know what I mean? Let's not waste no okay. time and okay. talk about the whole aspect of artists being influencers and, you know, should we as the community really look up to these artists based on the things that they're talking about and doing when it comes to their music? All right, so all right, there's two angles that I know I want to tackle it from, from a standpoint of really digging deep into how this marketing thing works for an artist to a point that they might not even understand. A lot of people in society in general don't really even understand. Right. And people think that it's an exaggeration. And then, of course, practically, how can you use this as an artist? So, first and foremost... We already talked about last episode. You are an influencer whether you want to be or not. Right. Like, even if you're not a popular artist, if you got a little brother who's watching you, like people in your environment who are watching you, you have an influence on them that you might not even know you have, right? So they're making decisions. When we look at Juice World, it's crazy. So I can't confirm this, but I was I heard a people a couple of people mention on radio shows and things like that mm -hmm. that Juice World actually told Future that Future put him on to drugs. That was why he tried drugs. Mm, and Future apologized, that. actually, that he put him on drugs. Because, you know, Future was heavily on him. Right. And then he continued to even make music on it after he finally got off. But he got off and he continued to make music about it for a period of time. Um, on it. And they made their joint project, World on Drugs. Which was World yeah, Peter, yeah. Right? So I think that's that enough shows the fact that Juice Rowe said that Future was the reason that even tried drugs shows you the influence of an artist on the population the influence of a voice because at the very least if we go to the core 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 of marketing what's the very first thing get attention right why is that we can't act we can't buy we can't do things that we don't know about exactly right yeah so like i like to even get as deep and I had this thought at like a very young age, but it was wild enough to me. If you look at depression, sad, and some of the things like, and we, we talk about the sad music because a lot of this is depressed music that we actually borrowed from rock culture. We always say we're rock yeah. stars these days. Yeah, we we right. borrow this emo from rock culture and they already went through this. They already have seen this and knows what this looks like. Hip hop is just experiencing it now. But when we look at that type of music, I remember having this thought, when I was younger, and I was like, man, you know how people talk about a lot of people who are depressed, they'll cut themselves and things mm -hmm. like that. Now, very well, it is a, it, 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 you might get depressed and you might think to do something like that, right? right. Hurt yourself in any kind of way. There's so many ways to in, inflict pain to yourself, whether it's uh, not physical, just through my relationships, I'm destroying the world around me, or I'm becoming aggressive or I literally self-inflict pain physically to myself. The thing is though, when so many people do that particular thing and oftentimes use the same items, that's not nature. That's because I've seen that other depressed people do this. Right. It's been marketed to me. I become aware. And sometimes there's that balance of creating awareness to talk against it and say, Hey kids, you shouldn't do this. And then the balance that you also just told some kids that this how is what do you it. do and right. how, how do you do it, right? right? Yeah. It's this weird balance that always goes on and we have to kind of work with. But just starting from the fact that creating awareness that something exists is marketing in and of itself. Right. That's, that's true. Now, this is one thing. Uh, when artists are first coming out, right, let's say, you know, for Juice World. To, for an example, you know, so when you first come out, most of the time, that first project is like your truest project of who you were. You know what I mean? It talks about the struggle that you've been through. It okay. talk, It really starts, uh, most artists, like their first project really speaks on things that happen in their life, right? Mm -hmm. So 
at some point when you start to get notice from this project, it is kind of like for artists, like, okay, everybody love this from me. This version of it. Right? Me. So it's like now... It's like Mary J. Blige. Everybody likes the press to let Mary J. Blige. Right. When she's in pain. Right. Yeah. And it's like now that's... Because, like, as an artist, when you know, like, okay, everybody loved that for me. This is what people want. Does Do you feel like it all... It kind of makes artists stay in that moment. It's like, for artists, like, if you knew that this what got you popping, and you know this is all the things that I was doing to get this music to come out. I was doing drugs, or I was so mm-hmm. depressed, and I was all this. Do you think that's one reason why artists have to kind of stay in that, or they feel like they have to stay in that mood to in order to keep producing that kind of music? So, for a person like Juice WRLD, because I, you know, I was listening to a lot of his projects, there's no transition from like 2017, his music in there, all the way up until now. All of the projects are sad. All of the projects have been talking about dying young, popping pills, you know, being so high. Like all of them have talked about the same thing. So it has been no, you know, progression or mm. or transition to a better life because now you have more. You have the ability to or you have things to where you didn't have before. So you shouldn't be that sad people would think so it's like yeah i mean i think there's a lot of truth to what you're saying actually just because and i don't know not for him specifically but just because any idea when we look at artists who are creating music and then they play around with this one song and it takes off and now they kind of get trapped in that right right it's the same concept so and then if you have to do and be in a certain mind state to be there then that's a whole nother thing that's what work that that's what's working this is what's getting me out of the hood or this is what's paying my bills and this is what people want to see from me it, it, it's, it's a weird space to be in right to not want to be like that and then also get your best results superficially at the very least right and money and fan love and all that stuff from this side and this this space that i'm in so i think that's interesting but at the end of the day that's part of the problem because we have gotten to the point where I'm, look i always connected to commerce right mm. like capitalism how business works patterns marketing that's always how i'm going to think about it so yes this artist comes out to do this and he breaks the breakthrough because it's sad blah 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 now not only does he possibly do more of that if he gets into that trap or maybe that's just something he likes doing because he's young and that's how he's feeling mm-hmm. but now he doesn't realize how hard it might be to get out of that but then now the record labels are going to say, ooh, I need me a sad man. Like, where, where, you know, that's not even the words I want to use. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but like I, need, I need to find me a sad artist. I need to find me a sad artist. And now we literally start to market sadness right. to kids. And that creates and permeates this, this, this entire, like, like, vibe and energy on a whole generation. And now I'm listening to sad music, d- despite what you think. Sad music doesn't make you happy. Like, some people get happy listening to sad music, but that's just not how, how the laws of the universe works, right? right? Like, like we can go science, science. It doesn't work like that. And these thoughts that you allow to be in your brain, they affect you even if you don't think that they're affecting you because right. it's not as immediate, right? We all think that we're all good. We th- Just like we think, oh, I, I just took a little hit of this and I'm I'm straight. Eh, you know, you're not really. You're still, like affected maybe not to the fact you might not look wild like this person but you're still affected so when it comes to the music like you're putting these people in a place where for what some people you're taking people from a happier not as dangerous state and putting them there right right and then from a standpoint of people who are already in that space i understand the idea of connection and relating oh this person feels that way too but even sometimes that comfort in that space can become a dangerous, dangerous thing but right. of course it, it does help some people connect in, enough to have time to get out of it as well it's just a but like my problem is the marketing of it when it become gets to a point where it's profitable to push this on people because people these businesses do not care like in, in large when we think about the large 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 institutions where you can't really attribute it just to one single individual right like yeah. no this is just an entire system that's at play that's hard to just stop you don't pump the brakes it takes years to even evolve and change it's going to take the most profitable product and then multiply that 
and sometimes the most profitable pro- product is destructive. So do you think that's, I mean, this is not like a fact, but it has to be something on, you know, the people that are on his record labels or on the record labels or, or in those positions that are kind of like over your career, like they know everything that you're talking about. They know the things that you're doing to kind of produce this music or, you know, things that you're saying in your music, but it's like, they're not really doing anything to cut that off. So when it comes to marketing, it's like, do you feel like they're encouraging you to like be this person, like be this sad person? What you do think? The, I would say yeah, because I, I would say like they're probably not telling you like go get you some perk. Did you have some perk today? Like <laughs> <laughs> some perk in a bun? Like you know what I'm saying? Perk like that I, dose. right? Like I don't think they're they're coming out and saying that, but they're also not. They're also, like you said, signing a wave of people that are in this place. You know what I'm saying? And then they have to turn around and market that. So it's like they know what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's almost like I I don't know if, if it's something that can be like slowed down or taken away because I, I do feel like that that is actually for like any type of genre of music. Like when you said about Mary J, that's the same as like Keisha Cole. Like mm-hmm. Keisha Cole went through, she was kind of like the up and coming Mary J. She had that breakup music and mm-hmm. you know that I'm a woman stand tall music. And then when she went through that period where she was getting married to the booby, the basketball player, she started being all in love and dropping like happy songs and like everybody was like, <laughs> What? Nah. And then she and then the music went down. Yeah. Like people couldn't follow that because they're yep. like, yo, that's not what we came here for. You that's know what I'm saying? So we go back to the system and you, so it's like there's so many stakeholders, the fans, the artists, the like it's it becomes a bigger system that's harder to stop because oh I'm trying to keep my job I'm at this label and I need to hit these numbers or else they might fire me or allow this other hungry person to like to take over what I'm doing so if this is gonna help me hit my numbers I'm a I'm gonna push this right, right. and I'm gonna push this artist so when it comes to being that artist and being a influencer to other people like how do they even really break out of that because if you're if you start out just being who you are and telling your story at the moment and that picks up to the world but then the world is like wanting more of this from you and then you get picked up by a label and they're like no you got to do more of this because this is what it's selling like how much responsibility can we put on that artist because it's like this is what everybody is pushing you to do for you to be successful yeah um so it's like you either gonna do it or not do it like rebranding is difficult for a lot of people. Like it's a because it takes time and you have to be intentional and you have to stick to it and have to sometimes deal with some of that short term right backlash. Which should you know when you look at the fact that some people do a lot of crazy stuff just to deal with the um, short term backlash when they think it's gonna get them attention. It's more so not the fact that they're not willing to sometimes go through the backlash, but it's just a longer term result versus short term ben- uh, benefit. So like artists, you one have to have balls to do it. Like and be serious about it. Like if you want to rebrand whatever vibe you get into, but a lot of it takes talent too. Like I think Juice World is somebody who could have done that. That dude was crazy talented. Like crazy, crazy. Like one of the like when it comes to that generation of artists, he was one of my favorite off of just pure talent alone. Um, so, like, I think if he got to a certain point where he wanted to do that, um, not knowing anything, what he like his personal thoughts, I think he could have done that. Um, somebody like X could have done that. Um, just because talent, it takes a level of talent to make some artists get lucky and they catch a vibe in a specific pocket, mm-hmm. and they really can't make great music on. You know, on any any other bag, but the the idea, and sometimes it's like you have to just accept you're not gonna be on the same level, but this is more profitable for you or a better lifestyle, more healthy, and long term, it's gonna be better. It's just not in the short term. You might be lower, but long term, it's just like being on a high scale because you're at a record label, but you might be an indie artist and get bigger cut. Mm-hmm. And you just if you stay in the game, you, you can get more long term. Depending, it's not everybody's situation, not that cut and dry, but like is that. And then also, again, though, the other people to do it and we can say, oh, they're super successful. That's going to be talent. Like there's no the only way to truly rebrand fully in that type of way is to outdo what you did prior. Mm. Right. Like so we say Cardi B with the stripper and Cardi B with the um, 
the personality and all that kind of stuff. And no, it wasn't just like Bodak Yellow and now she's she's popping just because she already had a platform. She struggled. She made music and her music was not necessarily all that great. It got some right. attention, but it wasn't all that great. They didn't think about that right. until she dropped Bodak Yellow. And Bodak Yellow was so much better than the other stuff she was doing. It was it allowed her to be known on a higher level and transcend mm-hmm. that other stuff, right? Like, now it's like, oh, we can look at her as an artist. So you sometimes you just have to, it's not that, it's like being good at something can be a curse if you don't have the ability to do the other things at a higher level. You get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's that's a that's a real true statement, you know what I mean? And but I still think like if you I think it's just even more than talent. I think you have to be bold enough to do it. You know what I mean? Because balls. off off bat, you already know what's that the you're equivalent going- of balls for like women. Like if you say I got balls, like it takes balls to do it. What, what would you say? I think balls? women still say balls. I don't know. Oh, okay. Like you're yes, not gonna referring say referring like to a different set. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, in fact. Uh, but yeah, I think you gotta. You have to be brave enough to like do it. You know, because you already know. First of all, as an artist, especially when you sign, a lot of times until you get to a certain point, like you're you do have you're doing what the companies want you to do. You know what I mean? So sometimes you don't really have that free range to even decide to switch your stuff up yet. You know what I mean? Like even Tiana Taylor, when she dropped um, her project, you know, she talked about after she did it, she talked about how like it wasn't all her creative idea because she was still like under Kanye. And it was like, you know, they had a vision for her that she kind of was going with, but it wasn't like all her thing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So yeah. it's like you kind of sometimes you got to kind of get a few things under you so that you can get to that point where you have more creative ability or, you know, you have more say so the things that you're doing more leverage. leverage. It's all leverage. Life is leverage. And I think people. A lot of artists shoot themselves in the foot because sometimes it's not that you can't go this direction. Like, yes, I get that you want to switch up at some point, but you have to understand if you lengthen your timeline, you'll have the ability to get more leverage and make it happen. So some people want to rebrand in the day. Right. Like, like give yourself some time to flower or maybe have to pop away for a while and then come back. But you, once you work on a longer timeline, it works. It becomes a lot easier to, uh, to rebrand because now you can do the necessary steps that allows for the leverage to make it happen, whether it's because you have to deal with business stuff, whether it's because you have to deal with fan psychology, whatever you're dealing with. But it's that short microwave mentality that makes most of these moves impossible for people. Right. And then one thing you said, you know, when it comes to Cardi B, um, you know, her change was like big because even though she's still like super like out of control or not even out of control, but just she still got that. That, that realness, flavor. yeah. That flavor. She, she's still with the vibes, you, you know. know? Lowry's but she's she's salt. she's definitely like way more polished, even the way she speaks. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like she when she used to speak, like loving hip hop, she'd be like, What? Oh, she yeah. you know, and she even did like a speaking class on the show where she just was uh, out of line. But like even the way she speaks now is just more like refined. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like she, it's not that she changed, she just learn how to be more professional and carry herself and stuff like that. But then I also think surrounding yourself with certain people will also let you get, like help you get to another level. Because I remember when she, when she was dropping uh Bodak yellow and a couple projects, she was saying how she didn't feel like it was going to be a thing and offset was the one who was telling her, like, nah, we need to drop that, we need to drop that. So it's like you have somebody else around you that's very successful, you know, in in their music. So it's like that influence kind of helped her, like, shape her into doing certain things, you know, opening up her mind to different possibilities because they do different things. So I think, like, us as people and us as artists, sometimes we are who we surround ourselves with as well. If you notice, like, Juice World, you know, hung a, hung a lot with the, the other emo people. Who, like, you're hanging around all sad people. You know, I saw Trippy Red just put on um, Instagram the other day how, you know, after Juice World passed, he was like, yo, we're not doing drugs no more. Like, mm-hmm. and he was like, when I say we, we mean the whole community. Like, all the emo, you know what I mean? Like, all of us, we're not he doing drugs. He said that. He was like, if it's not we, he said, if it's not we, we're not doing it. And he literally looked like he wanted to cry, but he said that, you know what I mean? So it's like, when you hanging around everybody that's doing this, how 
it's hard for you to get out of that place or get away from that, uh, uh, yeah. you know, that thing that's kind of holding you down and keeping you stuck. Like, people make you feel like, oh, we all going to be comfortable in, in this mood or in this area. Sometimes it takes some, yeah. Sometimes it takes yeah. somebody else to be like to open your mind to other things. You know what I mean, or other ways to go about things. That's exactly what it, like that's an environment. That's what it is, right? So we talked about the larger system influencing these things and making it hard to change, and you capitalize and you keep pushing this down fans' throats because it's, it's profitable. But then, of course, in life we have these micro systems, which are the environments and we choose to be in, the people we change, we choose to hang out, and there's these natural things that are happening within it. And that's what it sounds like in that particular case. And, yeah, to me, it's hard for artists to ever try to use the idea that I'm not a role model, I'm not an influencer. A role model, I guess, that has a a cachet to it, that has a specific idea. So maybe Mm -hmm. you can say you're not a role model, but you can't ignore the fact that you have influence because exposure, exposure itself is influence. Because it's ideas that are being inputted into our brains like a computer, right? And in some form or fashion, that affects what we put out. Right. Right? You can try to suppress and, and minimize some things, and, but it all, it's always going to form how we see the world. It's always going to inform and add to the filter of how we interpret things. So, like, if you give this type of content to people, that's going to be what they have to work with and, and, and how they, they act, what they want to do, what they want to behave in. Oh, this is fun? So I want to have fun. When I get to a certain age, ooh, I'm at a party and this is what they do when they have fun. They, I want to have fun too because that's what has been marketed to me. Right. That's the awareness that's been created to me. But it's like, how do we combat that though? Because it's like, all you know, music is the freedom of speech. Most people's music mm-hmm. is really talking about the things that they have literally been through or mm-hmm. witnessed or whatever. So when we have music, you know, trap music or whatever, a lot of the music talks about drugs. A lot of the music kind of, you know, degrades women. You know, a lot of the music does these things. <laughs> That's where I've been. Like, like oh, I've been I've been through a sad experience, and now I'm a degrade. <laughs> but it's like because I degraded. But if you, <laughs> degraded if, you in real if you if you grow up, you I'm know, a, a lot of people grow up in the house, you know, especially you know minorities. You're growing um, up in a house with without your your dad. Your mom is probably a single mom, or you probably had a stepdad in the house, like and men in and out, you know. So it's like your mom is probably working, so you're more so raised on the street. So you're raised, you're around all the people on the street. But that's so not you, everybody, though. That's not everybody. Like, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who do not grow up in that right i used to be mad and try to get so it's like there's a lot of people who do not grow up in that but this looks appealing or interesting and then they'll try to you know dip their toe in the hood i used to tell everybody like some people like bruh no we are trying to get out people don't want it like outside of people who are comfortable so they just don't they're afraid to leave a lot of people are trying to get out you can't just you know come through and frolic through it because it's a trap like right you think you just gonna go to this party but once you get into certain environments then I don't know, man. Like, I get... So, to me, that's my bigger problem. The the people that get drawn in that aren't of that and they think it's a game. So, one, you got the, the people who never really get in it and they're just watching on TV and they're that's a lot the masses. So, they fund the reasoning for do it because mm-hmm. now we're going to give you more of this. Ooh, this is bringing us money. Then you have the people who are truly affected where because of the marketing of it, they get into it. And then and their life gets up there, you know. Right. But we do have those people who came from it. And then you got the people who came from it. So the people who came yes. from it, this is where it's originating from, you know. So it's like, how can we tell you, like, you can't, you shouldn't talk about these things because now you're, you're influencing kids. Like we you, can't. You, Right. So it's like we can't really ever have a solution to the fact that, you know, we have all of this music that influences millions of people who talks about all of these what most people will say is negative things and and is influencing people to do things and say things and act a certain way or whatever. Like we can't really But that goes back to my perspective on the Lizzo conversation, right? Sometimes the thing in and of itself is not the worst thing in the world, but it's how it gets. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Whatever. I'm not going to remember that word right now, <laughs> but it gets taken and repurposed, right? For agendas. That's when stuff becomes a real problem. So that's like, we can't tell these kids or these artists 
I, you almost want that. You want that level of expression and awareness to exist in in the world, in the space. You you want people to tell the stories. You want the news to report from the ground. But you don't. But when it gets repurposed for these agendas, or when it becomes synonymous with certain forms of capitalism during certain periods, that's when it becomes dangerous. How do you control? You know, capitalism. I mean, like this stuff is multi layered, and and yeah, you can run in circles in your mind all day. So I don't. But, right. but at least understanding that it's connected, for one, it's just a part of, for, for me, like being a marketer, like you got to, you got to know. So it allows you to make the decisions that you, that you make and you have to be able to see it and analyze it in that way. My issue is just when people act like it's none of that stuff is connected. When they act like, oh yeah, these songs are not that big of a deal or this ain't, you know, or like all that stuff. It's like, bro, no, yes it is. It's too apparent that it's a. To say, oh, guns and music or buy or, or entertainment and, and all that stuff doesn't affect the way you look at stuff or try and like it does drugs, sex, happy stuff like things you might consider positive, whatever. It, it all affects all of it in the same way you might look at your parent doing something and do something because of it. It's right. just a mere exposure of it. Let's let's start there. It doesn't mean that you did something wrong. It's just the reality. It is what it is. And let's move and try to make the, get to the results we want to get to. Right, right. So I, I mean, I think I think we can wrap this up. I, I think for wrap it up. I think for Time artists, I just feel like you know, just remember that you are an influencer. The moment that you decide to be an artist, an entertainer, you're going to be influencing people around you. Period. So you already at, are right. At some point, you know, you do have a level of responsibility to others. Based on what you're doing. So, with that being said, I also want to switch it over and, um, you know, talk about some things that you guys can start doing to start preparing yourself to be more professional, to just scale your business up. You know what I mean? All right. So, one thing for me, and you can you can throw in, one thing for me um, that's important for artists is your performance, right? I always, I talk to Brandon Man about it. You know, I talk to a lot of artists about it. A lot of y'all performance is... <laughs> it ain't it. It ain't it. You know what I mean. And the weekend was a trash performer when he a performer when he popped off and he even said it himself. Right, but you know what? The thing is, the difference is, you know, some people learn from their experiences and then some people don't. So I see a lot of independent artists when I go to shows. You know, I was just on a panel recently and they had. There's always something that could go wrong, right? So the DJ was playing music. The DJ was all the way messing up the artist set, like. Every every artist said he was like speeding it up or he kept like looping the beginning and then it was totally throwing the artist off where A you could see them getting mad, you could see them like like losing their whole mind in front of the crowd. And it's like one, the crowd is seeing what's happening. They understand that the DJ is messing your setup, but you got as a artist, a performer, you gotta learn how to keep the show going. If you see the DJ messing you up, the music ain't sounding right, you still gotta be able to communicate to the audience, talk to them because these artists was totally like 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 they just wanted to get off stage now. You know what I mean? But it's like, yo, it's people in the audience, we actually rocking with you because we see the DJ messing your setup. Right? Yeah, okay. So it's like you gotta be able, you gotta understand that first of all, the show must go on. You have to learn how to keep your set going. I also think that artists need to start exercising. <laughs> yo, artists be out of breath. <laughs> you rappers, especially you rappers, singers don't really move around too much. And if they do, they got some type of choreography going on. But like rappers, y'all be so hyped. Y'all do the bouncy thing back and forth. And then y'all be out right. of breath. Nah, I get it. Like, that, that's real because when we talk about artist development and all that stuff, a part of it was exercises and like rapping while I'm doing stuff. I'm on yeah. a reel and I'm saying my lyrics and all that stuff. If you take it seriously, that's the thing. Like I only know one artist these days who I like got to know on a ground level who will be taking part of 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 something like that. Um, and that was Yanni Mo and Sir. Like he would be putting her through that old school gamut, and like she was dope as I like. I remember she performed sick one night. Like for real, she was like got off the stage and it was like a rap passed <laughs> out type type. But but she killed for that moment. She was able to lock in and and go. And you would have never known from a crowd standpoint right and it was amazing i enjoyed it when i knew what was supposed to be happening and everything anyway like i forgot about the fact she was sick right but most artists can't really do that and to know 
All right, so camera stop for a second. So uh, maybe I shouldn't. Nah, shouldn't nah, going, we want to know what I you used to do. I shouldn't be going into details. <laughs> but I used to do this. Um, I was in a, a acting class or whatever, a theater and all that really? stuff. Really? Yeah, you, look, I'm dope. I actually, <laughs> one man show, I can kill it. Like all kind of accents and all that stuff. But that's a different different life, you know what I mean? Okay. I'm the I'm most, most interesting man in the world, low key. But uh, like we had, um, like when we whenever, whenever I would do speeches, mm-hmm. right, or scripts and this wasn't even just for that this might be a speech for class or something like that i would practice it in in different states right to the point where no matter what happened i would be able to kill it so i'm talking about i might do it sleepy right <laughs> uh, and i'm gonna practice just jump kill yeah. it fresh when i wake up i might drink a little something Right. And still practice it. You know what I mean? I might do an accent. I would practice it from all these different angles. Like, I ain't going to the extreme. extreme. I really like, want to hear an I'm, accent. I'm but. not going to even talk about, like, how deep I would get into, like, deep into it. But, like, I would literally practice it from so many different states. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In so many different environments where no matter what happened, when it happened. You can still kill it. Now, it that's, that's the thing. Okay, so a lot of artists don't actually rehearse. Yep. You know what I mean? And I think that our, y'all got to start getting into rehearsals because, you know, when I was at this show, it was a young lady. She was she was a rapper and she was from up north. So she had that old school, like, Foxy Brown kind of style rapping, which was dope. It was refreshing. Yeah, yeah. But A, yeah, yeah. she was like, she didn't have a show track, which is something that a lot of people need. So as she's rapping, she's like rapping over her vocals, which is clashing. And then when she's, then she's running out of breath. So when she runs out of breath, she actually puts the mic down and just let the music rap for her. And then she's just like this. But it's like, we don't even know your song to vibe with you. So you got to keep rapping or keep moving, bust a move or do something. <laughs> like, don't just put your mic down and look tired yeah. because that's what she was doing. But it's like, and then she, literally, she knew I was one of the judges, so she got off stage, and I told her, like, you know, I like the feel of your music, gave me that old school feel, and she was like, oh, man, I ran out of breath. And I'm like, first of all, <laughs> I know that, but why would you tell me that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was just like, yo, and she was just like, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Like, she didn't really practice on how to be performing and moving and connecting with the crowd at the same time. You know what I mean? Even if you got to run out of breath, like she, you got to practice where to take your breaths at. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing you guys got to start doing. Start having some rehearsal, which actually will give you more content. If you start having rehearsals, you can videotape yourself and and use that as content. So it's Mm -hmm. more than one benefit to rehearsing, right? And then also get other people. If you're going to have people in the crowd, you know, you if you have a show where you're rehearsing, you can literally tell all your people to come out and tell them what to do. Or when I get on the hook, I'm going to be dancing like this. All y'all dance like this. Look, it's like a way to get creative. The best athletes in the world, best performances in the world, whether you're talking about Beyonce or Tom Brady or LeBron James, they watch film of themselves, critique themselves, mm. and figure out how to get better. Like, are y'all doing that with y'all selves? Or are you just performing? It's like, oh, man, that was a great night, and you were just happy the fact that you performed, and you don't even have the ability to look back and think back, well, okay, yeah, I felt like I was doing good in my head, but the crowd looks like, who is this trash exactly. person? Exactly. Or... I could have did that better, even if it was perfect. We These people who are beyond and already considered the best are looking at themselves, trying to figure out how to get better. How seriously do you take your own stuff? That's why I don't have, like, any remorse sometimes. <laughs> when, for real, like, when you aren't taking him that seriously, like, how can you expect to get those results? Yes, people get lucky, and this person doesn't have that ability. This person doesn't have talent. They're still successful. Or this person, like, cool, but... When you go through stuff, you might not have all those other benefits that other people have. All you can do is focus on what you can control. I'm big on focusing on what you can control. So if you aren't doing stuff like that to make yourself better in your art form, your craft, yeah, and then the same thing when it comes to your business and professionalism and all that stuff, then you can't be mad when you get certain results. Right. It's going to be really hard for you to scale up. You know, so definitely do some do that. 
Um, another thing I wanted to throw in there. Yeah, drop, drop the list on You this. know, another what, thing, and this list? is not even new order. You know what I'm saying? Another thing you guys want to do is make sure that you are updating your platforms as far as like your bio, especially like coming into new projects, like your bios on all your platforms, your social media, your website, you should up to update those. Your pictures. One thing I really want to talk about is pictures because when I'm putting shows together or if I'm doing stuff where I need an artist to send me a pic, like yo, the pictures be out of line. They y'all pictures be mean? out of line. First Just of all, be they like, be like selfies. Be naked in a diaper. Yes. Yeah. Crazy. But it's like, yo, <laughs> if you ever if you notice uh, you know, any celebrity, the reason why they can easily be put on different um flyers at any given time is because they have those pictures where they can be cut out. So you guys need to start having a photo shoot where you're on a plain solid background, like a white background, even if it's colored, a flat color to where you can be taken out and put on a flyer easily. You know what I'm saying? So they like I get that problem all the time and I yeah. and I hate it. And it's because like y'all pictures, if you send me a random picture. Sometimes I can't fit you into the space that's allocated for an image on a flyer. So now I got to do all of this maneuvering. You know, you as an artist, you should always have a full body shot, a half a body shot, a head shot. And that should all be on like some mm -hmm. some plain background to where you can reuse all the time. And then you can get in more into your creative bag and do photo shoots outside or in Rose Voices or whatever y'all be doing for these photo shoots. But you should always have that variety so that you never have a problem with people being like, nah, I can't use this picture. I can't use this picture. Send me another one. Send me another one. And they should definitely be high resolution, like 300 DPI, but that's getting deep into the details. But you need some updated pictures for whatever project you're doing. You should have a set of something new. Like to keep it simple. You want to make it as easy as possible for people to do business with you, yes. to spread the word, all that stuff. The more hurdles they have to jump, the harder it is going to be for them to deliver. And they might just say, look, next time, bro. Right. Yeah, and next time might not come. Or it's like, oh, I couldn't put you on this flyer, so somebody else on the flyer, and now you missed out on the op. So at the end of the day, man, like, because I, I have a homie right now who... I needed a picture for something we doing together and he wasn't sending it fast enough so I took this bad picture online as a filter. <laughs> I took a bad picture from his other stuff where I'm like, bro, right. you really need to change this picture. And then this man actually didn't recognize that that was a bad picture and the only reason I know was he took a picture that looked exactly like that bad picture. I'm like, yo, so he did this on purpose. Right. So I, I didn't even hit him back. I'm like, nah, I'm going to wait till we can talk. <laughs> I got to walk him through the right. process. So with that being said, you might need someone who's a professional, um, like in terms of like, and I'm not a camera you know, photographer and all that kind of stuff. I can have a decent eye to get at least solid enough. But no, you might, you should go ahead and get a professional and invest in that one time get as many outfits squeeze it in say like if, if they hourly squeeze in like five outfits or however you got to do it right and and now you can use that variety of those different looks for things as they come you can use the same set for a couple years you exactly know I mean? exactly so that's definitely um another thing that y'all want to like get together get your pictures right so that you can move forward uh something else that uh that bothers me is uh, grind your gears. It's just boy, y'all artists, boy, boy. <laughs> These artists be bothering me. Um, you know, a lot of artists when they are, well, I've noticed because you know I have a show coming up and I have artists sending me stuff. And if you call yourself an artist, right, I'm gonna need you to have recent music. I have artists right now that's sending me stuff from 2016. Right. And I'm like, and you're saying that you're an artist right now. So there there ain't no way that you don't have up to date music. So for all of you guys, and now I'm not saying that what promoting, if it sounds great though. So is it like this cause it sounds old or just the fact that it was created back then? The fact that first of all, I feel like Sometimes, a lot of times, music gets dated. So you can hear a song and the beat, the vibe, it feels like something from years ago. You know what I mean? And with this show in particular, I had multiple artists sending me stuff. Now I have requirements like I need you to have a video, all of this. So all of it looked old. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like all of it looked old. And I'm like, what do you have that's right now? Are you, are you still an artist or are you just... 
You just saw you, opportunity. Was yeah, like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like if you're a person and you're reaching out to people because you're trying to get placements, um, you're trying to get book for things, like people want to see what have you done recently. You know, what have you done for me lately? Like, what have you done lately? If you trying to get booked for shows you can, and you you can't send me anything that's up to date, that kind of tells me as a booking agent, as a promoter, like, if you don't even got nothing recent, that tells me you probably don't even got no fans right now or you don't have nobody moving for you. Right? It, it's just like a bad look, man. Right. So it's like, yeah. first of all, artists should be recording or, or producing music on a regular basis. Now, there's no like, oh, you need to bust down a song once a week or release a song once a month. But you definitely should be recording and creating music if this is what you do for a living on a, a continued is the basis. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like if you are an artist and you don't really have anything new, maybe your thing right now is to get a project together, create some new music, get your, your imagery together, get your presence together. Maybe you are trying to go through a rebranding phase and maybe that's one reason why you kind of took a moment off. But like you got to hit people with some stuff with right now. And, and stop yeah. like sending all of this old, super old music that sounds outdated. The visuals look outdated. You know, in the video you had braids, and now you got a, a, a cut like Brand Man Sean. You know what I mean? You you sending me pictures where you had locks, and now you got a low cut. Like everything has to translate with who you are right now. Because if you want people to promote you as who you are, like, and we're putting out flyers and we're putting out content, and then people are seeing like people that look two different, like two different people, it don't correlate. Like it don't go together. So we need to update everything. You need new music. Now is the time to start working on something new. Get some fresh sounds. Mm. You know, get everything that's that's new. I can say, as in, like to artists, what you're hearing right now is the type of person you want to do business with. Because the people who don't care about those things, the quality of their show or whatever they're doing in the other spaces is going to be on the same level. So if they're not caring and holding you to those standards. Yes, you can say, oh, I got in, but now you can also expect those low standards to be in the other aspects. So it's actually not worth being a part of that thing in the first place. So you want the people that you do business with to hold people to those type of standards, to have barriers to the level and quality of artists and the other people they do business with. Because I've definitely been through that, um, especially when I was doing my festival. That's my biggest biggest experiences with artists and things like that. Mm -hmm. For one... Even if the music doesn't sound outdated and isn't whack, you have the idea, just from a business standpoint, am I trying to put an artist out there and promote an artist that isn't active, exactly. right? They're not committed and they're not, you know, constantly working towards their career because it's like, yeah, I believe in you, but I'm not your manager trying to build you up, right? right? So I want, like, my incentive is to have an artist that's dope right now and for that artist to continue to be dope and enlarge in their platform because now I'm associated with that. That's how the people who are throwing events or doing certain things are going are to be thinking. So it's in your best interest or in their best interest to work with people who are currently active, currently grinding and doing work without them because now I can add my sauce onto it. And then if people really see you doing that stuff, they'll add something extra or they'll really, oh, man, this artist is dope. And I think this artist is going somewhere. I see the momentum. Mm-hmm. Let me get him on because I want to let everybody know about him. And I want them to know that I was the one that told them about him. Right. You know what I mean? But you have to put yourself in a position to look like that. Because then people will start coming to you more or doors are open for you a lot faster. Right. And from a, uh, like a fan standpoint, like if if you if somebody hears a song, right, I just hear a song, but now I want to look you up. So I go look you up on YouTube. People look at dates. I know I do. Like I look at like when was this video posted? You know what I mean? And it, and it well, video especially, yeah. Right. And it, and it makes it's me... It's less on Spotify though. Right. On, it's less on Spotify, but I feel like a lot of people... Well, I know me personally. I think when I listen to something new, I'm always trying to find the visual because me, I'm just activated visually. Mm-hmm. Like I like to see something, you know, sometimes you watch videos and it makes you like a song more because you've seen some type of visual to it. And it mm-hmm. kind of like en- engage with you to mm-hmm. it like reeled you in versus you just hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like. A lot of people will go and start to look you up. And I'm one of those people. Like, I go to YouTube because I want to see, like, what your visuals look like. Especially when I hear an artist that I I don't know who this person is. Like, I want to see what you look like. 
You know what I mean? So I'll go to YouTube and search for some type of video. And then I always look at the date. Like, is this video, is like, is this a recent artist? If it's old, what does it mean to you? Like, if it's, if it's old and I can't find anything that's recent, it makes me feel like I'm wasting my time. Oh, and and you can't find something recent. Right, and I True. can't find something recent. I'm just like, okay, well, that. maybe this artist's not even doing music no more. So, like... Right. What's the point? You know like, what I'm oh, saying? Oh, dang, they were dope. They could have went somewhere and did something. But yeah, it's like yeah, you yeah. got me all hyping and side, all hot and bothered. You know what Oof. I mean? Oof. And, and then just let me down. I'm unfinished. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's incomplete. <laughs> we took it there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, boy, you got to come with the package. And, and you should want to <laughs> not pause. I don't know what y'all say pause. <laughs> Whatever. But it's like, yo, before you... It's like, yo, a lot of your um, artists are constantly reaching out to people to, to like, put you on and do this and do that. And then they're asking you, like, okay, send me what you got. Send me pictures. Send me this. Send me that. And it's like, you just don't have nothing recent. So it makes people feel like they're wasting their time yeah. trying to to put into you. You know what I mean? When you don't even, you clear, it looks like you're not putting into yourself. So. No, nah, 100%. Like, I, I still always go back to this artist who rejected him for his show. And I was like, bruh, you don't have anything. Right. Like, literally, I couldn't tell he was an artist from looking at his Instagram. I couldn't find music. Like, he literally had nothing. And then this artist had the nerve to get mad and say, look, man, you don't know what you're missing out on. I was going to debut my music at your event. And I was oh, like, oh. no, the hell you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> this shit don't work like that. <laughs> you think I'm going to risk my credibility on right. something I have no idea about? So I I don't understand how artists put themselves in that position to to think of themselves. I, I get the having to build up confidence, and that becomes a part of the game sometimes. But the level, the gall that some of these people have, like an, as far as not understanding the other side of the business mm -hmm. and the value that you need to be bringing, not just to fans, but to these, to the other people, what what matters to them, right? The more you can put yourself into the mind state of the person you're doing business with, understanding their business model and just what matters to them, the more you can make it easy for yourself to be a value to them and to um, just, just create a relationship that actually gets an impact. So, right, because one thing is like you're gonna lose out on a lot of opportunities because you're not prepared. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you might lose out on a gig because you don't have no pictures for a flyer, or you don't have your music in in a certain type of format. You know, which is another thing that y'all should be having. Like, bruh, when you say you're not prepared for life, no, not prepared. It reminded me so. My sister had his homegirl. They were at school. They were uh, uh -oh. at Jackson. Personal story. They were at Jackson State. <laughs> and Russell Simmons came, apparently. And, and she was like, oh, my God. Like, uh, can I get an autograph? Mm -hmm. And the girl, um, I mean, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, where's your pen or whatever? And she was like, oh, man, I don't have a pen. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> <And> I <five? laughs> My sister said she looked at her dead in the face. It was like, you're not the pen for life. <laughs> 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 just walked away. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. But yo, that's a fact. Like you, like, listen, we can't go places or do things expecting certain things and we're not even prepared to be able to take on that opportunity. Yeah. So I think it's a lot of opportunity that, that a lot of you guys miss out on, especially those artists who really are talented. Like you, you, your music really sounds good, but to a lot of people, that's, it, it takes much more than good music to market and mm -hmm. and to you know to put on a show and everything mm -hmm. so it's like it's not just about your music you have to be more than your music you have to be your business manager you have to be your own assistant you have to be your own all of these people so that you can put all of these things together so when you're going to promoters or music supervisors or or licensing companies or whoever to get placements or do whatever you need to do then you have exactly what they need they they don't have no room to ask you no questions Cause when I when I'm looking to book somebody for a show, it's like you should off the bat send me. You should already have a Dropbox or a thumb drive or a hard drive or something filled with everything that people need in order to be able to pro promote you. 
which is your music. You know, you might want to start thinking about, and I feel like a lot of artists don't do this for some reason, but a lot of artists don't even have the different versions of their song, like a radio edit, an explicit oh, yeah. version. Not enough. You Not know, enough, yeah. the stems, the, you know, just, just the vocal, like... Y'all don't even have all of these different versions. So how do you expect to get on different radio stations? Every radio station, you can't curse. You know, every, you know, podcast or whatever, everybody don't curse on everything. So for you to not miss out on that opportunity, why don't you have a radio version? You can't run no ads with cursing in your videos. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm-hmm. like, it's a, it's a lot of things that you guys got to really hone in on so that you can start scaling yourself. You're probably holding yourself back from not doing a lot of these things. Facts. That's all I got. Right. I mean, you know, we, can go kill, down a, we can go down kill, a list. You know, kill but, the topic. Yeah, but being professional, like, period. Right? And, again, the shortcut to being professional when you're working with other people is understanding what's of value for them, what that task they need to do, what you need them to help you with, and making it easy for them. Right. Like, that's it. Just make it easy for them. And now that also makes it easy for you because I've been in situations where someone like, Brandon, matter of fact, you asked me for a picture. I wasn't going <laughs> to say And I took it, like but... two, three weeks. So like, I'm, I'm like, man, I don't yeah. have, a, now I got to go try to get a haircut. Like, and I don't like these other pictures of me and not having that to just send over, right? Then it makes it one, once again, it delays their process or it makes it harder for them. But then also, you might have to interrupt what you're doing and it might not be a good time to do that. So you create a longer timeline and now you really are making it difficult to to um, to keep the ball rolling. Right. So like, get, just, just do that stuff. It'll be worth it on the back end, even though it might seem annoying. Like Put the entire package together, whatever that looks like for you. Um, everybody who's actively trying to do something as some sort of public figure should have something like that or if you just have a business you should have something Definitely like that. Should that, have that that makes it easy for people to communicate and understand what you stand for so they can do that for, for you right and i want to end it off with this one last thing which is more like a challenge All right. to my artists you know one thing i want to challenge you guys to do is to start putting yourself um, in different situations or around different people. Well, meaning that if you're an artist, you know, start going to business events where they're talking about building your business in general, right? If you're an artist, start going to um, summits where they're teaching you uh, how to do things or workshops where they're actually teaching you how to be a successful artist. Like, get out of that mind state of like, oh, I'm going to pop up at this a networking event or this <laughs> showcase or something like get yeah. out of that and start surrounding yourself with people that are outside of the music but still have relatable information that you can apply to your career not only is that going to elevate your mind that's going to get you into a different uh space of even how you network with people speak to people give you other things to talk about outside of music and just help the way you communicate like in general i think like that's something that i'm I am doing for myself, you know, being around people who are way more successful than me that probably know a lot more than me, but still putting myself in that situation and being humble enough to just sit there and shut up and learn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's just helping me scale and elevate as a, as a woman, as a person, as a businesswoman, all of that. So I challenge you guys to start doing that. And I I think it's going to give you some different results and kind of just open your mind up to some new opportunities. That right there. All the way. That's it. All right, folks, this is another episode of Music Mavericks Podcast. Follow at Brandman Sean and follow at Lady J Bookums on the gram, Twitter, and anywhere we exist online. Right. Y'all be good. Peace. <laughs>